not the gamete type. So it all bashed in the plants, like ferns, gymnosperms, and flowering plants. It is the sporophyte, which is the dominant body in the life cycle. In this life cycle, this is what you probably would call a typical fern. It is, of course, the sporophyte plant body. It is diploid, color-coded black for you here. When you see a fern in a natural setting, you usually go see this part right here, which is just the leaf or frond, it's called in the fern world. Frond equal leaf for ferns. Okay. But there are other parts. Okay. One is this, and this is usually right at the surface of the soil or just beneath the surface of the soil. This thing right here called a rhizome. And a rhizome is a horizontal stem. And along that rhizome are buds that give rise to new clusters of leaves upward and roots downward. Okay. One thing that I'll warn you of, those for whatever reason like to use interchangeably the terms rhizome and rhizoid. Of course, they sound a lot alike, but they are not very much alike botanically. A rhizoid is a root-like structure, which is one cell layer thick. Okay, you find it in bryophytes, you also find it in ferns. A rhizome is a horizontal stem, okay, that might have rhizoids branching off the bottom of it, but it is something quite different than a rhizome. And so here is the rhizome right here, they have a label C, and roots as well as rhizoids go downward off of that stem and they anchor the sporophyte. Hmm. The other thing that's shown here are these things right here. What do you call these? You ever heard of these called fiddle heads? Oh. Fiddle heads is nothing but a sort of colloquial term for the de a developing fern leaf. Many ferns, not all of them, but most of them, as their leaves develop, they uncoil or unfurl. And that has a specific name. It's called circinate vernation is what it's called. Circinate vernation means leaves uncoil like fiddleheads as they develop. C-I-R-C-I-N-N-A-T-E. Circinate. And the other part of it is V-E-R N-A-T-I-O-N. Vernation. So here in this B part, they are showing circinate vernation in this sporophyte plant body, leaves unfurling as they develop. Reproductively, the key thing about sporophytes is that they make spores, and those spores are produced in clusters on the undersides of leaves. These clusters are pictured right here, 2A, the little dots will look as like brown, rusty spots on the underside of a fern leaf. Okay. And if you look at one of those brown, rusty, it's called a sorus, plural, or sori. Uh, excuse me, sorus is singular and sori is plural. But if you look at a sorus in detail microscopically, you will see something very much like this. You will see sporangia. Here they are, stalked. These stalks travel back and join at a particular place down here called the receptacle. You will also see a T-shaped shield labeled D called an indusium, and the indusium is thought to be some sort of protective cover for the sporangia. Different groups of ferns, different genera, different families have characteristic indusial structures. The one that we're going to look at is T-shaped as pictured here, but they come in a variety of different forms that can be taxonomically useful. But in any event, what we're really interested in is one of these sporangia. And here is a detailed view of a single sporangia. Notice that on one side over here, there is this helmet-like layer of cells called the annulus. And the annulus is going to be important in dispersing sperm. The way that it works, or spores, excuse me, the way that it works is as it dries, it has a tendency to peel back, which causes a split on the far side in the sporangium. The split specifically occurs at a particular cell called the lip cell. 
So contraction of the annulus causes tearing of the lip cell, and ultimately this splits open this branchial wall, and the spores are released. These spores, appropriately red color coded, are all haploid. They've been produced by meiosis. And I think you're probably familiar with what spores give rise to in the life cycle of land plants. What is that? Gametophytes. That's correct. And you can see that here the spore developing, and it's developing a bit more. Ultimately, it gives rise to this heart-shaped thing here called a prothallium, which is the fern, typical fern, gametophyte plant body. So here you are looking at the gametophyte. This gametophyte typically is nutritionally independent of the sporophyte and occurs physically separate from the sporophyte. Okay. And it has both, again, most of them, in a homosporous species, you see all these spores on one side, that gametophyte is bisexual. It has both antheridia, pictured right here, hat cell splits open, sperm swim out. It also has archegonia, sort of vase-shaped structure with a venter down below and an egg. These right here are located in that notch on the underside of the gametophyte, which lies more or less flat on the surface of the soil. So on the bottom side, facing the soil, is where you will find the antheridia and archegonia. See these little tufts? Those are rhizoids on the gametophyte. Root-like, single, one cell layer thick, anchor and absorb. So they're root-like in that sense, okay? But these are what rhizoids are, small, slender, root-like structures and on the underside of the gametophyte. Well, sperm have to swim from the antheridium to the egg inside the archegonium. That's going to require the presence of external water. So we're still in vascular plants, land plants that require an external medium, the presence of water in order to accomplish fertilization. But if fertilization happens, the egg becomes